and it's Chris Kyle was a murderous liar. That's murderous. The, it's a community on Facebook, and it's mm. all a bunch of different posts saying that you know, saying how much it was bullshit. This is crazy, man. He definitely knows what to do with a rifle, and he has the judgment and the discipline to take a shot, wisely choose an escape route, and immediately depart to avoid capture. This is not a zealot. This is a calculated shooter. You're here, and I'm here. <laughs> so that's great. I have to ask this question, but are there any kills you regret? No. Not at all. In 2003, after the American invasion of Iraq, Saddam Hussein's regime fell and the state collapsed. However, from this collapse emerged a movement of resistance. This movement resisted the invading forces for years. Within this resistance, a legendary fighter emerged who brought various forms of torment to the attention of the American forces. This fighter was known as the Baghdad Sniper or Juba the Sniper. Over the years, he disoriented the American Army and all special forces, regardless of their equipment. In your opinion, why did American soldiers have a particular apprehension towards the formidable sniper Juba, and why did they create the legend of Chris Kyle to rival him? Was Juba eventually captured by American forces? We will answer these questions immediately. It is crucial to stay attentive until the end of this video to not miss any captivating events and to discover fascinating information. I also encourage you to subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell to ensure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Let's begin. In one fateful day in 2003, following the American invasion of Iraq, a group of American soldiers was traversing the streets of Baghdad in their armored vehicle en route to their military base. Suddenly, a sharp shot pierced through the driver's head. The vehicle swerved off course and collided with a cluster of rocks by the roadside. The soldiers inside hastily disembarked. Initially, they were uncertain about the source of the gunfire. Then, a second shot followed, claiming the life of another soldier. Immediately, the American soldiers realized they were dealing with a sniper. They couldn't discern the sniper's location, but when they finally pinpointed the origin of the shots, they returned fire. The sniper remained steadfast in their concealed position, methodically picking them off, leaving them bewildered and uncertain of their assailant's whereabouts. It was akin to a phantom taking them down from a distance. This group of soldiers sought refuge in nearby buildings, attempting to evade this perilous sniper. However, there was no escape. The elite sniper continued to pursue them, firing from the windows. When the soldiers ascended to the roof in an effort to locate the sniper, a barrage of bullets rained down upon them, one after another, until they all perished. This sniper displayed remarkable agility, swiftly changing positions between buildings. They settled in a new location and resumed their deadly precision. It was a nightmare for the soldiers. They were unable to discern the source of the shots. In another nocturnal scene, a battalion of American forces conducted searches in the homes of Iraqi citizens, claiming to be in pursuit of what they labeled as terrorists. In reality, these were resistance fighters defending their land against occupying forces. The information swiftly reached the elite sniper, who swiftly geared up, armed himself, and set off. Duty called, and there was no time to waste. The confrontation between the resistance and the invading forces was fierce. The sniper positioned himself advantageously, striking the enemy with pinpoint accuracy. One by one, he took them down. When American soldiers identified the sniper's firing direction and returned fire, he moved with agility, seamlessly changing positions between buildings. He resumed his strikes promptly, becoming like a haunting ghost, impossible to trace. 
His shooting precision and speed of movement were a true headache for the American soldiers. Only he could compel entire battalions to retreat, leaving them to abandon the area in humiliation. What a source of pride! A single man standing against an entire battalion, armed with the latest types of weapons and equipment. It is said that the legendary sniper known as the Baghdad Sniper inflicted staggering and awe-inspiring losses among their ranks due to the terror they instilled in the American army. The very soldiers who witnessed the scenes bestowed upon him the nickname Juba. Interestingly, this name is derived from a dance performed by certain Africans known as the Dance of Death. This name is fitting, as when Juba was present on the battlefield, American soldiers scattered like dancers, trying to evade the killer's bullets. Juba, or the Baghdad sharpshooter, bewildered the American army for several years, resulting in significant and massive losses within their ranks. According to Iraqi resistance sources, it is estimated that he may have taken the lives of between 650 and 700 American soldiers over a span of three to four years, from the onset of the invasion in 2003 until his disappearance in 2006 and 2007. Just imagine, one person against 700 soldiers. It's a truly staggering figure. Juba remains an enigmatic figure, unknown by both his true name and appearance. The image presented to you is likely a popular representation, but it is probable that it is of a famous likeness. Some sources suggest he hailed from the city of al nukaib located in the province of Anbar. In reality, his actual name was Azam al-Anzi, a member of the Aniza tribe, a well-known lineage present in several countries, including Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and even extending into Syria. Generally, he was not recognized as a specific individual. He remained a mystery. It is said that he was a soldier in the Iraqi army before the American invasion. Following the invasion, he joined the Iraqi resistance, thus commencing his operations against American forces. Juba's combat method involved targeting various objectives, be it a battalion, a vehicle, or an armored vehicle, among others. He would then relocate to carefully selected concealment points, extremely difficult for the enemy to spot. Typically, the location chosen by Juba was about 200 to 300 meters from the adversary, a considerable distance to cover. The sniper specifically opted for this distance for a primary reason, because he was using an Iraqi-made rifle called Tabuk, a modified and improved version of a Russian sniper rifle. This weapon was not considered advanced, with its range not surpassing 200 meters. According to some accounts, Juba managed to hit targets from a distance of 500 meters. Regardless, Juba focused at a range of approximately 200 meters from his adversaries to maximize the accuracy of his shots with this rifle. After selecting his position and preparing himself, he would open fire on his targets with great speed, hitting them one after another before they realized what was happening. He particularly focused on the neck and head area to ensure the shots were lethal. His precision was remarkable, and it was rare for his shots to miss their mark. After Juba fired upon the soldiers, they would start to dance, trying to evade the sniper's shots. According to sources, a statement from an American general advised his soldiers to dance to avoid Juba's bullets. Once the American soldiers became aware of the threat posed by Juba, their initial protocol was to throw a smoke bomb to obstruct the sniper's view and then take cover behind the smoke. They struggled to locate Juba due to his mastery of the art of concealment. He would only be located after he had already left the area. Legend has it that when soldiers arrived at the sniper's site where he had been spotted, they found empty casings and a letter written in Arabic on a black and white background. The Baghdad sniper has been there. Each empty casing represented one of his victims. American soldiers counted the number of dead compared to the victims the sniper had killed. They found that the two numbers were equal, evidence that Juba had not missed his mark. 
It is said that American soldiers were at their wits' end against Juba. They armored their vehicles and even their own bodies with heavier armor for enhanced protection, but Juba did not let up. He aimed for the joints, areas that were impossible to protect like the neck, the lower back, where they couldn't cover in order to move. Juba continued to fire at them in vulnerable areas, as if it were second nature. The Baghdad sniper, Juba, was an enigma to them. They even set a substantial bounty, stating they would offer up to $40,000 to anyone providing information that could lead to his identification. But Juba countered, offering a bounty of $100,000 to any American soldier who could show his face from a tank or an armored vehicle, saying, show your face and it will be the last thing you see. It was a direct challenge, a threat. What is certain is that after a few years, four excerpts emerged, which could even be considered as films produced by the Iraqi resistance between 2005 and 2007. These four films were titled Juba, Baghdad Sniper. The excerpts from the film showed some of the sniper operations carried out by Juba. I won't include them as they would likely pose problems with YouTube. However, these films or excerpts documented and explained how Juba conducted sniper operations targeting American soldiers. They also documented some of the training sessions of several sniper groups within the resistance, most of whom were presumably trained by Juba himself. This fighter represented the elite and struck terror into the enemy. Their challenge lay in the fact that the story of their legend, as well as the excerpts being broadcasted, inspired courage and valor among their fellow resistance members. Simultaneously, it sowed doubt among the American soldiers. In other words, it was a psychological warfare on all levels. So, the U.S. military decided to retaliate by creating their own legend in an attempt to rival Juba. This legend they forged was that of the elite sniper Chris Kyle, who became a symbol of hope and pride for American soldiers. According to U.S. military reports, he is said to have taken out 160 individuals during the Iraq War, though actual figures likely approached closer to 250 kills. Chris Kyle was reputed to be one of the deadliest snipers in U.S. military history. Among those he allegedly shot down were women. From my research, some say that the first person Chris Kyle ever killed was a woman. There are also sources claiming he targeted children. Their argument is that these individuals were carrying explosives or posed a threat to American soldiers. In the United States, this person was a source of pride. They even published their name all over the world. They were a legend for them and for their soldiers. They even made a movie in 2014 called American Sniper, where they depict this legendary hero, the one who actually fought against terrorists. The clips I used at the beginning of the video were from the movie American Sniper, in which they included a person playing the role of Juba. You might then wonder, since this film is American and was originally crafted to glorify the image of the American Sniper, why would they show Juba in the film with all his skills and power? Simply put, this happens when your enemy has become a legend. Even if you create a film to extol your own army and legendary sniper, it's inevitable that you highlight the skills and abilities of your adversary. Otherwise, everyone will know you're being dishonest. Imagine if this American film portrays Juba as this powerful force. What does that say about reality? Juba was a legendary fighter who is rarely discussed, and Chris Kyle was far from reaching Juba's level. In the movie, they attempted to portray Juba, the sniper, as a terrorist. Towards the end of the film, in an attempt to compare him to Chris Kyle, they depict Kyle taking down Juba with a long-range precision rifle. While this may hold true within the confines of the film, in reality, only God could determine whether Kyle, or anyone else for that matter, could have killed Juba or even approached him on the battlefield. A swift comparison between these two men highlights the true hero. Chris Kyle was a soldier in an occupying army, whereas Juba was a fighter on his own soil, 
defending his country and his people. Chris Kyle had all the logistical support, including sophisticated weaponry, armored vehicles, aircraft, and satellites at his disposal. Juba, on the other hand, had nothing but his faith in God and his fellow resistance fighters. Chris Kyle wielded the most advanced firearms, while Juba utilized his local rifle, and yet he proved to be deadlier. Even in terms of the number of victims, Chris Kyle is said to have taken down around 250 individuals according to U.S. military records, while Juba is estimated to have eliminated about 700 on the side of the Iraqi resistance. In matters of concealment, tactical intelligence, and combat strategy, it is undeniable that Juba emerges victorious. Regardless of the efforts put forth by the Americans to shape the image of a sniper and produce films and narratives about him, matching the level of the Baghdad sniper remains an impossibility. Allow me now to elucidate how Chris Kyle met his end. In 2009, he left the military to establish a firearms training center in the state of Texas. In 2013, Chris Kyle went out with his friend named Eddie Ray Ruth. They had served together and fought side by side, and while a strong friendship bound them, Eddie, in contrast to Chris, carried the burden of psychological troubles stemming from the war and the horrors he had witnessed. Over time, he developed mental health issues, with reports even suggesting he descended into schizophrenia, experiencing delusional thoughts and hallucinations. He moved from one psychiatric facility to another, finding no respite from the mental torment that plagued him. No one could offer him true solace. One day, as Chris appeared to be seeking ways to help his friend overcome the psychological trauma he was experiencing, an idea came to him. He thought that taking his friend to the shooting range might help him re-establish a connection with firearms and bullets. Why this idea occurred to him, I cannot say for certain. Eddie was grappling with severe psychological troubles and trauma. It was genuinely unclear how a shooting session could heal him from the deep-seated scars he carried from his time in Iraq. Nevertheless, the two friends arrived at the shooting range. Eddie picked up a weapon. Just as Chris turned his back to his friend, Eddie raised the firearm from behind and discharged it. Chris collapsed to the ground, felled by a bullet from his own friend in his own homeland. Fate had decreed that he would return home only to meet his end in his native land when he was supposed to be safe in his own country. Adding to the tragedy, he was killed at a shooting range by the hands of his own friend. Following Eddie's arrest, it was evident that he had descended into madness due to the mental afflictions he was grappling with. He could barely articulate himself. This is the remarkable tale of Chris Kyle's demise. As for Juba, it is clear that he vanished between the years 2006 and 2007. After many years, sources from the Iraqi resistance reveal that he was actually apprehended by American forces, unbeknownst to them that he was one of the resistance fighters, Juba. They were unaware that he was the elite sniper from Baghdad who had been haunting them for years. According to these sources, Juba was imprisoned, subjected to torture, and ultimately succumbed under its weight. However, this account is not confirmed with absolute certainty. The sources recounting this tale stem from the Iraqi resistance. Nothing was announced regarding this until years after his arrest and passing, in order to deny the Americans the satisfaction of having captured and killed Juba. The Iraqis wished to preserve his legend in their minds. Regardless, this individual named Juba will remain an immortal legend for Iraqis, Arabs, and Muslims alike. In your opinion, which elite sniper do you personally prefer? What do you think of Chris Kyle's death? Is Juba still alive? Did Chris Kyle eliminate him before his assassination? Share your thoughts in the comments. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos feel free to also check out our incredible videos. See you soon for more exciting content.